Abdullah Al Aryan is an assistant professor of history at Georgetown University's School of Foreign Service here in Qatar. He joins me now uh, in the studio. Uh, welcome once again. What are the, the divisions that, that Arab leaders need to overcome then to solve uh, the Syria crisis? Well, I think more broadly what we've seen in the last few years is the development of, of competing blocks of, of countries that support the idea of uh, an Arab Spring or at least a, a series of Arab revolutions that have overtaken a number of countries from Egypt to Syria to Tunisia and Libya and on the other hand, of course, countries that are far more resistant to that. Um, the, main, the main indicator in terms of how countries have actually uh, dis determined their support really comes down to basic self-interest and of course in the case of Saudi Arabia for instance they've supported a coup, a counter-revolution in the case of Egypt while they continue uh, to push for a revolution to overthrow the Assad regime in Syria and this has to do with trying to reshape the, the regional balance of power away from the so-called resistance bloc, away from groups like the Muslim Brotherhood or even uh, Iran or Hezbollah or some of these other uh, groups that are that are perceived to have been trying to reshape a new order in the region for several years. Abdullah, stay, stay with us. I want to, to put another question to you in, in just a moment. Uh, but first, uh, in Egypt, nearly 700 people are due to go on trial uh, on Tuesday, including the spiritual guide of the Muslim Brotherhood, Mohammed Badi. The defendants are accused of violence in the town of El Adwa last August. Now, this is the second of two mass trials to take place related to violence after Mohamed Morsi was removed from office. And it comes less than 24 hours after death sentences were issued for 529 people convicted of killing a policeman at attacks on government property. In Minya, north of Cairo, families of the sentence reacted to the verdict outside the courthouse. Their trial on Saturday lasted for less than an hour. Human rights groups have expressed their dismay at the ruling. And the United States gave this reaction to the decision. We are deeply concerned, and I would say actually pretty shocked, uh, by the sentencing to death of 529 Egyptians related to the death of one policeman, as well as the spate of violence against police stations and security personnel in the aftermath of the clearing of two squares in mid-August. Uh, it's our understanding that over half of those convictions were uh, in absentia. Uh, obviously, the defendants can appeal. Uh, but it simply does not seem possible that a fair review of evidence and testimony consistent with international standards could be accomplished with over 529 defendants in a two-day trial. It sort of defies logic. Abdullah al Aryan, when the leaders at, uh, at the Arab League summit talk about terrorism, uh, many people uh, think they're referring directly to the Muslim Brotherhood. Have we heard the words Muslim Brotherhood uh, so far in, in today's proceedings? And, uh, why not tackle the issue head on? What, why not say the words? Well, I think they're, they're uh, avoiding direct discussion because there's a deep sensitivity, obviously, of the different uh, countries involved here. Of course, this being led by Qatar on the one hand and Saudi Arabia with its other Gulf allies on the other. Uh, that they don't want to confront this issue or air their dirty laundry, so to speak, in such a public forum as the, as the Arab League. Although, of course, they've done so through the press and through the very vocal gestures of removing their ambassadors. And clearly, this is not an issue that's going to be resolved in these kind of discussions, especially when you consider that, uh, again, Saudi Arabia and, and um, the United Arab Emirates did not even send the highest level uh, delegations to the Arab League summit at, at all. Um, but one has to wonder when we look at this question of terrorism, I mean, what they're actually uh, talking about, because we haven't actually seen any evidence evidence of the kinds of things that are being alleged here. There's no actual violent attacks or, or specifics that are being conveyed at all. What we're, we've seen, of course, is that there's been a counter-revolution that has been acting with, with extreme levels of violence uh, led by the military and the security regime in Egypt. The leaders are dealing with, with huge political shifts uh, in the region. What, what are their, their differing views on um, Islamist politics? I mean, is, is, is it easy enough to, 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 to sum it all up succinctly? Well, I think it goes beyond just the idea of Islamic politics. I think this goes to the idea of whether these countries want to support democratic transitions in the region. And of course, what we've seen is that uh, Qatar, for instance, has supported the idea of having uh, regime changes in a number of these countries. Um, and then once the Muslim Brotherhood became the leading uh, party, especially within Egypt, that, that Qatar put its backing behind the Muslim Brotherhood there. Um, whereas on the other hand, of course, Saudi Arabia and its allies have wanted to both avoid uh, the Muslim Brotherhood coming to power, but even have are, are been opposed to democracy uh, in general and, and do not support a democratic transition in Egypt and are far more comfortable with the idea of a repressive regime led by a military dictator as we're seeing emerge under the leadership of uh, Abdel Fattah al-Sisi. Abdullah al-Aryan, for the moment, 
Uh, many thanks indeed.